Hey, Kevin. Uh huh. Uh, can you record this? Yes, definitely. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Kevin? Kevin? Were you trying to uh, get me? Nope, everything's good. I had a message that said the host would like you to unmute your microphone. It's kind of odd. No, oh, I did that. Okay.
Welcome, everyone. I think that uh, we realized in the last uh, couple of hours that our capacity on Zoom was about 100. So we've gone out and are live casting on YouTube as well. So welcome to our All College meeting for the fall of 2020. Uh, welcome back to the CAED and welcome class of 2024. Uh, all of you are the future of the college, the future of our professions the future of the built environment, and in effect, the future of the natural environment, the pe way people live, the way people relate to one another, the way we work, and the way institutions operate. And you're gonna shape and build tomorrow's buildings, landscapes, cities, and societies. You know, our mission is to lead you in your profession, to, to prepare you to lead in your profession in a rapidly changing world. And that's in the world of accelerations where there's exponential change going on in the environment and in the climate. Exponential change in technology and in tools. Our courses and co-curricular offerings are intentional to prepare you to be the leaders in those yet unimaginable changes. And you literally will change the world one project at a time. Those buildings and spaces that you make are gonna have an impact on many generations, because most of those will last even longer than you do. Education is a sacred time, not just to gain knowledge and learn skills, but to set your aspirations and trajectories. And that's what we're dedicated to at the CAED. And I hope you will commit uh, yourselves to the same. So again, I say welcome, but what a year this is. Um, we're in the middle of a pandemic that has destroyed lives. It's shut down the economy. It's put tens of millions out of work. It's changed patterns of work, living, and learning. Race relations are in a terrible state. But on the bright side, in a state of awareness that gives hope that we may, may use this moment in history to realign our perspectives and to go after systemic racism. I'm committed to that here. Shortly after the George Floyd murder, I sent an email to our community and I will resend it, but I wanna take this opportunity to repeat and renew our commitment. And I'm gonna just read off uh, a couple of the last sentences from that email. As a college of diverse ethnicities, races, nationalities and identities in pursuit of delivering and receiving an education that will set us free to do and think in ways that benefit our neighbors and society, we will stand for what is right and for each other. It is on our unwavering commitment to ensure that all members of our community are able to pursue their education, lives and dreams with joy and to do so with the support and encouragement of one another. We will work to create and maintain that context, eliminating barriers where they may exist and adding support where it may be lacking, that we all may gain from the rich diversity that makes us, us. We live in a deeply divided country. Whatever your affiliation or belief, as long as it is not opposed to, demeaning, or threatening to others, is welcome. You are welcome, and we celebrate and will benefit from the diversity of us all. Black lives matter. Black and brown, Asian and Hispanic, Native American, Muslim, Jewish, Christian, Everyone, we are a community that shares an increasingly interconnected sphere that's spinning in space in a remarkable and fragile equilibrium. At the CAED, we celebrate diversity because it makes us better. It helps us see ourselves, know ourselves, develop objectivity over subjectivity, and it helps us work with and serve each other. So this is not a place for disparagement of any kind. We all have biases. It's just our job to discover them, to acknowledge them, and then to work on them. To support each other in the pursuit of learning, equipping ourselves to make a difference. You know, um, this is an exciting time uh, and we are uh, doing some exciting things and we're gonna talk about those. But first I wanna welcome and introduce uh, some of our new faculty and staff and uh, some of our leaders that you're going to deal with over time. And I'm not sure that they all got into the Zoom uh, meeting, and I hope, but I hope they did. And so I'm gonna call up some names and if you will 
uh, come on and, and give a brief introduction and hello to everybody so they know who you are. Um, this year, in the face of all these difficulties and budget cuts and concerns, we were able to continue with three full-time faculty searches, and uh, the results of which were tremendous pools of excellent candidates, and out of those excellent pools came extraordinary persons. And I want to first introduce Kayla Hernandez, who is joining us as an assistant professor on tenure track. Kayla, are you here? Many of you know Kayla. Uh, she was working in a part-time capacity before, and apparently she's not able to be with us right now, or she's in on the YouTube track. Um, and secondly, we have assistant professor on the tenure track, Andrea Sosa Fontaine, who will be teaching in the interior design curriculum. Andrea, are you here? I am. Hi, everyone. Really looking forward to meeting everyone. I'm excited to be joining the faculty. We're so glad to have you. And we also have our fourth uh, Shidlowski Emerging Faculty Fellow, which is Jennifer Meekins joins us. Jennifer, are you here? Hi, I'm here. So happy to meet you all. Very good. Uh, we're so glad to have you. And if you're not familiar with the Shidlowski Emerging Faculty Fellow, this is a one-year appointment that's a competition that goes out around the world uh, to bring in somebody for one year not only with a full-time appointment, but also with a project in mind, a project uh, which is funded by the college to do something that benefits themselves, but also our community. And it's wonderful to have you, Jennifer. <clears throat> I also, and if, if your mic is on, if you would mute that, that would be wonderful. Um, and then also I wanna introduce some of our new part-time faculty, starting with Ben Sivas. Ben, are you here? Hello, everyone. Hey, Ben, and uh, some of you will be familiar because you're a recent graduate and we're so glad to have you in this role. By the way, uh, uh, just a tiny little story, Ben, uh, and for everybody, that's how I started my teaching career, uh, was by a surprise phone call um, asking me to teach right after I graduated. So congratulations. Really excited, Yasmin, thank you. Very good, very good. Yasmin Alkasawane, are you yes, here? Correct. Yes, I'm here, hello everyone. I'm very happy to join the team. And we're so happy to have you. Thank you. And who, and who do you have with you right there? I have Nadim here. He's uh, my assistant today. <laughs> Hi, Nadim. We're glad to have you as an assistant as well. Yasmin, it's wonderful to have you. Thank you. Zelik Fok, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Hi, everyone. Wonderful. So we're very pleased to have Zelik here and, uh, and, uh, uh, he comes to us from Canada most recently. Is that right, Zelik? Yes. <laughs> very good. Yes. Uh, we're very excited very to good. join the team. Danielle Bilot, Bula. Do I say that right? Maybe not. Uh, close, Bilou. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm excited to join everyone. I'm here in Chicago. So hopefully at some point I'll make it out to Ken and get to meet everyone in person. Very good. Very good. Now the first four uh, that I introduced were teaching either in foundation or in the architecture program. And the next four are in the interior design program. Kelly Stinson, are you here? I am. Hi everyone. I'm excited for the semester and happy to be back. Very good. Kelly has, uh, has a past with us and we're very pleased that she's back and joining us. Sarah Sahegbalam, uh, are you here? Sarah may not be here. Sarah will be teaching uh, the lighting workshop in interior design. And uh, Carol Carolina Silva, I don't believe could make it. She let me know. Um, I'll pause just in case she popped in. And Kristen Pleat. Kristen, are you here? Well, we're very happy to have a, a great lineup this year, not only of our returning faculty, but of many new faces who you don't know, uh, but who are extraordinary and will be contributing much to the culture of, of learning here at the, at the college. Um, we also have Troy Rosenbaum back as an advisor. Troy, are you in at this point? Uh, Troy is back as an advisor, and uh, I think a good number of you will be uh, seeing Troy as, as your advisor uh, who is assigned to you. 
And uh, I also want to make an announcement about uh, a new position uh, for Amanda Colucci, who is directing advising and has been promoted to assistant dean for administration. Uh, Amanda, we're very pleased to have you. If you would come on in, and uh, Amanda will still be in, in overseeing uh, advising, and I think she wants to say some things about it. Sure, thanks, Mark. Welcome back, everyone, and welcome to all of our new students. We're looking forward to the fall semester. Um, I did want to provide some updates on what's happening with the advising office because your experience is going to look a little different from what it's looked in the past. Um, we will, of course, still be there to support you. All of our advisors are excited to welcome you back as well. Um, but we will be having all of our advising appointments uh, remotely. And you can schedule those appointments, either scheduled required advising, which are 30 minute appointments, or quick question advising, which is more for time sensitive issues. Um, you can schedule those the same day. And those are about 10 minutes long. You can get into uh, any of those appointment schedules through our CAED website uh, for advising. Thanks. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And she's been busy um, reorganizing in a way that will work in, in these new modalities that we have to adopt to, adapt to. Uh, Nick Fagan is our librarian in the Morbido Library. Nick, are you here? Yep, I'm here. Uh, the library is excited to be open this semester, although you will notice some modifications to the library as well um, and how we do things. It is a big, big experiment, so please uh, bear with us a little bit. Our hours will be Monday through Thursday, nine to three, and Friday, nine to one. Uh, this is less hours than we previously had. So please plan your visits accordingly. Um, when I'm here and available, I'm going to try to keep the library open beyond those scheduled hours, but that might not always be possible. Um, we are going to be providing service primarily through the window that opens into the reading room, um, and we're limiting the number that enters the collection, so um, please ask us before entering. Uh, we will continue to provide access to a public computer, scanner, and copier. Um, we do have sanitizing supplies for the equipment uh, and for the reading room. Um, they are inside the architecture library, so feel free to use it as much as possible. Um, one of our big things is that we don't want our books spreading the coronavirus, so we are quarantining returned items several days before we're checking them in. So that means that if you return items and you, you may still see them on your account for a little while, um, but if you do receive overdue notices or have concerns, just let us know and we'll take care of things. And even with these modifications, I do wanna emphasize that the library is here um, to work with you, to help you become better researchers and help discover what is really out there. And if you have any questions, please stop by the library and set up a virtual appointment with me. Um, I welcome everyone back and I hope to see you at the library. Nick, uh, Nick has added a tremendous amount of dimension to what we do. And, and I think he's helping our community understand what a library is because what a library is, is not what a library was. And uh, we're very, very excited and, and I'm learning about what a library is as a, as a global network uh, access to information. So. Don't take it for granted. It, it's not what it was. Um, find out about it. Uh, get involved in the in the in the introductions through FYE. Or if you're uh, an upper class student, uh, don't don't uh, neglect the fact that uh, that you're a lifelong learner like I am, and we need to figure out what things are as they change. Um, Freeland, would you uh, make a comment? Uh, make some comments on some of the initiatives and what's happening in the Fab Lab. Hey everybody, um, welcome back 2020. <clears throat> Fab Lab this summer, uh, Nick and I were able to move some equipment around, open up some space. Uh, we were able to get some new work tables in the lab. Uh, all these things are based on organiz organizing the lab to be more accessible uh, and, and make the workflow more smoother when uh, students are using the lab. We've added nine hours to this year's schedule. In addition to that, uh, we've Put together an online supply store. Uh, we're covering things like masonite, MDF, Baltic birch plywood, uh, XPS foam, and a little bit of plastic sheeting. All that information uh, and our new hours will be sent out and posted online soon. So please keep uh, keep an eye out for that and uh, take a look at the CAE 
uh, web page. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Freeland. We're very excited uh, to have that new store. And, you know, part of that was a reaction to student requests uh, for a store. And, and, we've, and we've responded, Freeland has responded, and this should be a huge add to, to what we have here in our community. Kevin, can you speak to some of the changes and differences we're going to see in the digital print lab and laser cutting um, and in our labs and, and what, what you've been preparing for this new season? Hey, everyone. Um, just a few changes to tell everybody about. In CAED, uh, we've moved the printers. Uh, if, if you haven't been up to the fourth floor, there's no more uh, huge printing area. So. The Xerox printers are in 317. The uh, large black and white plotters are now in 323. Um, I'm, I'm asking that only three students max are in those spaces. So go in, release your jobs, get it and get out. Um, for those of you who are across campus, uh, actually right after this meeting, I'm running to receive Xerox printers in Terra, Prentice, the Gym Annex, the Old Spark Studio, and the Idea Base tannery downtown. Um, so those are just regular eight and a half by 11, 11 by 17. For black and white plotters, we have one going to the gym annex and one going to Terrace uh, to try and serve those better so that you know you don't have to run across campus. Um, moving on to the output lab. So we're changing a uh, pretty big change. We're going to all um, in-house making. So the student workers in the lab are going to do the 3D printing, the laser cutting, and the color plotting. So you'll have to submit your digital file online. You'll have to bring in your materials for laser cutting and then we'll let you know when they're ready to pick up. And that's just because the room is, is so odd and small and, and it's, it's really hard to get in there and, and still be distant. Um, so more details to come on that, on how to submit and, and so you can follow a step-by-step -step process so you don't have to worry about taking notes right now. Um, but that's all I have. Oh, uh, we are hiring. So if anyone's interested, and working in the digital lab this semester, uh, please reach out with a short email and your resume. Kevin, could you say something about the um, um, the, the lab machines and, and how about some of them being remote access? Oh, sure. Um, so since we're not really using the computer labs, um, 309 is getting some use. So half of those are going to be available for remote. And then uh, most of the 330 labs is going to be uh, available. Right now, it's a little tricky. Uh, I have a, a sheet on how to do that and a list of IP addresses on how to connect. I'm working on getting a website up so you can actually go in and see a little icon where the computer's green if it's available or it's red if someone else is using it. Um, but until then, I can get the directions out for the kind of uh, nitty gritty way to connect. Thanks a lot, Kevin. And, and uh, I think this will, will serve us well. Um, there's been some concern about will those green computers, uh, remote computers, get taken over by people who do really long renders. And um, so we may have to manage that a little bit. But we want all those computers to be available to you all the time, even though uh, we can't uh, use the rooms in the same way because of social distancing. But also, hopefully soon to come online is another project we've been working hard on, and that is giving you access to the Ohio supercomputer system for rendering, especially, and researchers for research. Uh, that's a supercomputer that's in, in, um, in, in Columbus physically, uh, but it's basically you're being able to render on the cloud. So we're looking at Maya and Arnold, as well as, um, as, well as um, um, uh, V-Ray, uh, to be able to be rendered there. So coming soon, I don't know when, but we're pushing for that to happen as soon as possible. So thanks, everybody. Thanks, Kevin. Um, I'd like now to just turn to our program directors and uh, maybe we could start with uh, Dr. Suat Gunhan uh, for construction management. Are you in? Oh dear, maybe he didn't get into this meeting. Um, good morning, everyone. Yes, very good. Good to see you all here and welcome to uh, fall 2020. I'm Suat Gunhan, uh, the Director of Construction Management Program at CAED. Our CM program is part of CAED since 2017 and now with around 250 undergraduate students and our uh, newly launched Master of Science in Construction Management Program. 
And with our 100% job placement rate, we are proud of our positive contribution to AEC industries. Very good. Very good. Thank you for that. Um, and um, Brett Tippy, Dr. Brett Tippy, are you here? Architectural Studies Program Coordinator. I am here. Thank you, Mark. Um, so uh, as many of you already know, Architectural Studies is the liberal arts option that we have in the college, um, where students focus on language, logic, and rhetoric of the design process. And it's a degree that prepares our students for professional graduate education in a variety of fields, um, which might include architecture, interior design, urban design, urban planning, historic preservation, graphic design, and the list just keeps going. Um, interestingly enough, our grads are being, uh, are being accepted into some of the top programs around the country for, uh, for graduate school. Um, and uh, they're also, our students are all pursuing minors and even double majors in other fields. In fact, last time I checked, we had about 25% of our majors are double majoring in other things. And that list is long too, and I won't go into that list. Um, lastly, I wanted to say to the freshmen who are joining us uh, in architectural studies, um, you are uh, in the uh, first year experience course with, uh, you're in very good hands there. I'm very glad to have Professor Thal coordinating it and Geely's Peebles teaching it as a student success leader. And um, please take advantage of, uh, of them, especially Geely's as a good mentor for you as you're progressing through the programs. Thank you, Geely's. And thank you, Dean Stewart. Thank you, Dr. Tippy. And uh, uh, Professor Willoughby um, is the Interim Director of Interior Design. Uh, are you here? I am, I am. Uh, thank you, Mark, and welcome everybody uh, to the new school year. Um, and for those of you returning, uh, welcome. Um, we have some exciting things going on in the interior design program. Um, I think that the, the uh, community engagement studios in the fourth year are, are doing some really exciting work and looking at uh, social issues that uh, interior design has a strong impact on. Uh, we also have some really exciting work going on in the third year where the students are working on uh, a national design competition. Um, really wanna welcome our, our new faculty. We have some great new faculty uh, for the program and uh, very excited for the year. Um, I am gonna be teaching for the first time a FYE section. So I look forward to meeting some of our uh, incoming uh, students. And uh, th thank you, Mark. Wonderful, thank you, Professor Willoughby. And uh, Professor Bernal, are you here? I don't see your name. Um, I am here, Mark. Wonderful, good. Welcome everyone. Good morning, afternoon, night, wherever you're joining us from. Uh, I'm thinking some of you might be in different time zones possibly and I know some of our faculty are in different time zones and I just wanted to mention this is an incredible opportunity even taught through the pandemic and everything that we're facing we're able to bring to you world-class faculty and be able to extend this opportunity to bring people I think we have faculty joining us from Italy, Oman, Chicago, uh, California and so on so we're really taking advantage of this situation as an opportunity to expand the kind of experience that we're able to provide all of you I wanna welcome all the new faculty and those of you who are changing roles or moving into new positions. It's really good to see your faces. I'm looking forward to the contribution and to the students. If you are returning students, welcome back. Things are gonna look different, but we're gonna keep things exciting and moving. If you're a new student and you don't know what we usually do, you're gonna be in for a talk, not only in this fall and spring, but also when things return to some kind of different modalities. So you're gonna to have to be open-minded and adaptable as well. I want to cover a few things that we did over the summer. We worked very, very, very hard to be able to provide most of you a face-to-face -face learning experience, especially in studio. We have moved into nine different locations. All of you who requested a desk for studio have a desk. Many of you would even have two faculty members teaching you to be able to have a face-to-face -face and remote instruction. In the building sciences, the faculty spent an, an immense amount of work over the summer developing their lectures and lab courses. In the history and theory classes, very similarly, they're working very hard to make sure the interaction with students is fluid, but it's also very high education kind of modules that we're being able to provide you. In the computer apps, we welcome new members to the computer apps and digital streams of the curriculum. You'll be receiving 
as we continue to improve our skill sets, you will be incrementally learning new software and new techniques. And Mark, should I jump into the lectures and events? Um, or you have that later on? We'll come back to that. We'll come back. Okay. To that. okay. Uh, one more thing is for the studios, keep an eye for an email that would come at some moment. We're keeping it a little bit as a mystery, but the last two weeks after Thanksgiving, your studio is going to look a little bit different. As you all know, you're going to move to remote instruction after Thanksgiving, all of you but we're gonna develop a different kind of project that will take place during the last two weeks after Thanksgiving. Uh, welcome everyone. And for those students who uh, earned or uh, were awarded in the, in the spring semester, please collect your books from the main offices. And I wanna congratulate all the faculty and the students for the amazing work that we're, they were able to accomplish transitioning to remote learning in the spring. Very good. Thank you, Professor Bernal. And, and those four um, run our undergraduate programs and, uh, and both uh, Dr. Gunan and, and, and Ivan also run graduate programs. But we have some coordinators of other graduate programs. I'm gonna ask Dr. Reed Kaufman if he would come in and say a few words about the MSAED program. Good morning, thank you, Mark. Uh, again, welcome everyone. Uh, I'm Dr. Reed Kaufman and I'm, I, <clears throat> excuse me, I lead the Masters of Science in Architecture and Environmental Design. For those of you that aren't familiar with it, it's the STEM-based thesis education uh, that focuses on science and design research activities. So we basically have students um, working closely in one-on-one -on -one, uh, situations, performing research with, uh, within five different concentrations. And I know uh, some of you that are familiar with the program, program are sort of familiar with these concentrations, but uh, we, have, we still have the living architecture concentration, which, which I lead, the bioclimatic architecture, which is now led by Adil Chirac Alden and Luis Santos, uh, structural resilience with Rilu, creative robotics with Ibram Pustinci, and kinetic systems with Diane Davis. Uh, if you are a student out there and you're interested in working very closely in either, any of those concentrations or those special areas, uh, we do have some undergraduate activities. Some of the labs uh, do have undergraduate activities, but for the most of you looking at graduate education, please check us out and feel free to contact either me or those faculty members directly. And just for everyone else, um, uh, the faculty have done really well with the COVID transitions and uh, we've moved a lot of our research online. There will be a few of us in the basement. so. If you see us, give us a friendly wave from a distance um, and, uh, and um, watch for some emails because we, we have some really good successes over the summer. Uh, Relu have had two students in the Structural Resilience Defend thesis and have moved on. And a lot of our students are um, now alumni are publishing in peer reviewed and refereed journals out there as well as being gainfully employed. So uh, good luck with the semester and thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kaufman. And uh, um, Dr. Baramzadeh, uh, could you speak to the healthcare design program? Hi, everyone. Thank you, Mark. Um, I'm Sarah Baramzadeh, the coordinator of healthcare design program. Um, as the name says, the expertise that you will gain is in healthcare design. This is a post-professional degree, and it's a combination of design and research. So you will gain some research skills um, along the way as you're having your design studios. Um, this is focusing on healthy environments for all people and also for safer and more efficient environments for hospitals. And this focuses on all sorts of users. So understanding all sorts of users is very important. Uh, we offer a combined degree also with interior design. So if you're an interior design student um, a junior or a senior, um, you're welcome to apply for this combined degree. And that allows you to finish your master's in one year. We also offer a graduate certificate um, in health systems and facilities design. And that's uh, a minimum of 12 credit hours that you can finish and get a certificate along the way. Um, and that's it. Thank you, Mark. Thank you very much. It's a wonderful research program. Um, and also the Master of Landscape Architecture Architecture, uh, the court program, program coordinator, coordinator is, is 
Hi, good morning. Thank you, Mark, for your introduction. I'm Kat Marshall. I'm Associate Professor of Landscape Architecture. I run and coordinate the Landscape Architecture program, which is at the Cleveland Studios. We are a professionally accredited program. It's a three-year degree. So anyone with non-design backgrounds enters our program and can come out with their professional license, um, or not license, but the professional degree to be licensed. The MLA focus is on developing capable landscape architects with distinction and global awareness of the built environment with unique assets looking at the region of Cleveland and the watershed of the Lake Erie Basin. We have an urban landscape focus looking at post-industrial placemaking, landscape health, hydrology, the Great Lakes watershed. It's an intersection of the industrial urban landscapes and the natural landscape. Our faculty backgrounds and specialties complement the program's curriculum with focuses on design principles, morphology, technology, and ecological experimentation. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you for that. And, and there's a bit of an echo. Maybe that's your mic, Cat. Uh, I, I don't know. It's an M my office. OK. Um, so thank you. And uh, you are up at the Cleveland Studios, where we also have urban design. and. Uh, we're very glad to uh, also introduce Terry Schwartz, who's the director of the Cleveland, Cleveland Urban Design Collaborative, which is a very special group. And maybe you can explain what that is, Terry, and what you're doing up there. Sure, thanks, Mark. Um, greetings from stormy Cleveland. I, I hope I can talk to you without being interrupted by thunder. It's been a little loud up here this morning. Uh, we're really happy to welcome a new group of students. We have 20 graduate students in the Cleveland studios this semester in landscape architecture, architecture and urban design, I think 20 almost. Um, but we also run a um, sort of the outreach division for the college. We have community partners and projects throughout the Northeast Ohio region, uh, focusing on urban design um, work. Uh, but our, our footprint actually extends well beyond that these days. Um, we're not traveling as much as we used to, but hopefully when the world returns to normal, uh, you know, kind of our work can continue to have a, um, a reach across the Great Lakes region and sometimes um, internationally. Uh, I just wanted to mention that a good way to get to know um, some of the things that we do up here in Cleveland is to join us for our programs. Normally, we would have many in-person opportunities. This year, our program series is completely on Zoom. So Fridays between noon and one, we often have um, lunch talks. Uh, the first one coming up is on September 11th. That's um, Mordecai Cargill from the Third Space Action Lab. He's going to be talking about activating space and activating people and the principles of um, racial equity by design. Uh, there aren't programs every Friday, uh, but you will get notices of them. Uh, we have seven in all for this fall semester, so I hope you'll be able to join us uh, for some of those. And then maybe in the spring, uh, as things get um, uh, a bit more normal, we can think, I hope, uh, about ways of engaging with all of you on the main campus, uh, maybe even in a, a more tangible way. So uh, thank you and welcome to all of you. I hope to see some of you in Cleveland. We're so pleased to have the Urban Design Collaborative and uh, it's got a great strength of reputation for, for what it does and is a true interface uh, to the communities around us and contributing to design initiatives uh, and policy initiatives. So we're, we're glad to have you. Um, let's move to some of our student organizations. We want you all to be aware of who our new leadership is and what opportunities you have. Maybe before the organizations, I could start off with our undergraduate Senator, Joel Valzel. Are you here, Joel? Yes, I am. Uh, it's good to see uh, all of you uh, this, e this morning. Uh, my name is Joel Dalzell, and I am the undergraduate st student representative uh, for the College of Architecture. Um, I represent all the undergrad students, both at the undergraduate, or both at a college and university level. Um, you know, I've been able to provide input both uh, to the CAD administration along with uh, other university um, officials, and I'm excited to uh, represent all of you this year. Wonderful. We're glad to have you. And I know you're sending out a communication very soon if you haven't already. Um, Joel has been active this summer and coming to me with some really great initiatives and 
uh, seems like you're gonna get off to a great start. Our graduate Senator is Susanna Kubisova. Susanna, are you here? I don't think she is, but you will be hearing from her. Um, let's move on to our student organizations, um, starting with our, our wonderful, um, robust and active con uh, construction management student organization, whose president is Christine Busi. Christine, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Wonderful. Welcome everybody back to the fall 2020 semester. My name is Christine Busey and I am the president of the Kent State Construction Management Student Organization, which for those of you who are new, our organization is dedicated to the development of students outside of the classroom, um, specifically for construction management students. So by being in our organization, students will have the opportunity to gain connections within the industry and explore various career paths within construction management. Although many of our activities are normally hands-on and in-person, our board and I have been working this summer to create interactive virtual events. So this semester we have many virtual construction site jobs tours, and we also have um, many different lecture series that we'll be hosting this semester. So even though things will look a little bit different, we're still engaged and ready to go for the, for the semester. Fabulous. We're excited about your leadership, Christine, and I know you're going to do a great job. Um, AIAS is Will Maniot. Will, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Hello, everybody. My name is Will Manet. I am the president of AIS Kent this year. Uh, AIS Kent will be having lots of wonderful events this year, although all of our events will, will be online. We'll still be giving everyone an opportunity to network, learn, and have fun. Uh, this year, members will have the opportunity to attend national virtual conferences. Uh, attend le lectures and network. Uh, please check our social media, Slack, and email to stay updated on events. Um, our first general meeting will be on Thursday, September 3rd at 7.30. Everyone is welcome to attend. I look forward to seeing everyone there. Well, that's great. And I just want to add a little commentary that uh, the AIAS chapter is one of the strongest in the Midwest, um, the Kent State chapter. And uh, Will, we've had a string of, of national leaders as well. Who do we have right now? Uh, yeah, so our national, uh, we have one member um, on our, that is our Midwest Quad Director. So he is in charge of the entire, all of the colleges in the in, uh, Midwest. He, uh, that's Cooper Moore. Um, he, he does great work for us. Wonderful. Very good. Thanks a lot, Will. Uh, IIDA, uh, Brittany LaDanza. Hi. <laughs> um, so hi, everyone. My name is Brittany Iadanza, and along with Alyssa Vargo, we are the co-presidents of the Interior Design Student Collaborative. The purpose of IDSC is to serve as an umbrella organization to unite two professional organizations, the IIDA Campus Center, and the ASID student chapter. Um, so what we do is we help connect students to these professional organizations so that students can begin to make connections when attending their events and learn from professionals. So if you would like to join, our first meeting is gonna be September 14th at 1.30 over Zoom, or you can find us on KSU Engage and request to join IDSC or you can email us at ksuidsc at gmail.com and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at ksuid underscore idsc for updates. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Brittany. And sorry about what I did to your name. Oh, um, no, you're fine. <laughs> um, our AXP organization, Dylan Herman Holt. Uh, Dylan, are you here? He's the president this year and would like to speak to you about it. Hi, yes. Uh as Dean Mister said, my name is Dylan Herman Holt, and I'm the president of the Severus chapter of Alpha Rho Chi. Um, this 2020-2021 school year, uh, what Alpha Rho Chi is is we're a national pre-professional co-ed fraternity for architecture and the allied arts. So we offer a number of professional, social, and um, philanthropic events every year, which we've been working all summer to make uh, all virtual and make just as uh, as helpful and beneficial to you as students. Um, some of the ones that we have planned are Q&As with uh, firms across the nation that we've been working on um, getting set up where we'll actually like Zoom with 
different people from firms uh, and ask them like how everything uh, has affected them this year and affected just different parts of our, our nation and uh, the job force. Uh, and so if you're interested, please either contact uh, me at my email, uh, D-H-E-R-R-M-A-2 at Kent, um, or find us on KSU Engage or our Instagram, which is APX Severus. Um, thank you. Thank you, Dylan. Thanks a lot. Um, Nomas, I didn't hear back from uh, Cantrell uh, Lodge. Uh, Cantrell, are you here? Is anyone here from? I'm here. Oh, wonderful. Great. How you doing? My name is Control Lodge. I'm the president of NOMIS. Uh, last, oh, well, let me start off with um, NOMIS is National Organization of Minority Architecture Students. Um, we're here for the empowerment and the support of minorities in the industry. Um, and it's not exclusive to minorities, but it's just here for support of minorities. Um, last year, we, followed, we had a lot of success with uh, NOMIS giving, conferences, mentoring, and job placement. Um, and we look to continue that kind of stuff. Uh, maybe not so much the in-person, no misgiving type things or conferences. Uh, our conference is online. So that's something that you can look into as far as competitions as well. Uh, this year, we're looking more towards professional connections and things like that. We have mentorships available. We have ACE uh, mentoring that we actually got uh, wind of from the construction management organization. And uh, we've just been thriving with them lately. So. Uh, yeah, look to us, look for an email from us uh, for peer mentorship as well as professional mentorship. Wonderful. Thanks for your leadership. It's a great chapter, great organization. And, uh, you know, we want to do as much as we can with you as well. Um, is there anyone here from the ASLA, the Amer uh, American Society of Landscape Architects student chapter? Yes, yes I'm Wonderful. here. Hi, uh, my name is Amanda Mulford. Great. Um, I'm the current president of the student Kent State student chapter of ASLA. Um, so one of the first things that we're doing in the semester is um, parking day, which is coming up on September 18th. And um, rather than what we've done in the past, where um, we kind of create a small scale pop up um, green space um, occupying a parking space. Um, we're kind of taking a, you know, doing something more socially distance um, appropriate and um, using it as maybe um, a small scale kind of preserved landscape. And we're hoping to use it as an opportunity to educate on the connection between environment and social justice. Um, and then later in the semester, we're hoping to do other networking um, events with kind of local professionals and um, other, other things like that, whatever kind of the semester allows, so. Wonderful, Amanda. Amanda, will parking day be uh, just in Cleveland or might it be in Kent as well? We're planning to do a spot in Cleveland. Um, we'd be open to definitely doing one in Kent if there um, if there's interest, kind of. Um, yeah. So I would just say let Amanda know if you're interested in taking over a parking space, legally or illegally. I don't know if we which tack we take. I know both it goes both ways across the country. Um, but uh, if you want to take over a parking space and design something and build something there. Very good, thank you, Amanda. I mean, what you just saw were leaders in a college that is uh, dedicated to preparing leaders. And uh, we're very excited that you've stepped up to that. Um, there's going to be many more leadership roles for all students um, year after year. And we would just ask you to think about that, to develop your resume in that direction because the professions you're going into are professions where people are looking for leadership. They're looking for uh, professional advice and leadership in what they do. Um, shortly, you will be receiving an email about the Dean's Student Advisory Board elections. Um, each of the people you just saw are automatically on the Dean's Student Advisory Board, but there's also other positions for each cohort in your level. Uh, there's a position that you need to elect. If you're in a second year ID, you need to let and elect a representative who will sit on that board meet with me a couple times a semester to bring ideas, but also to listen to initiative uh, proposals that we're putting forward and to give advice. So please um, take the nomination process seriously, nominate who you would like to see on the ballot, and then there will be a, a follow-up vote shoot soon after that. 
did you know? Um, I'd just like to say a few things about what's happening at, at the school, just a few high level accolades. Did you know that the architecture program is ranked 16th in the country for programs that firms wanna hire from? Um, that's amazing. And it's the first in Ohio. And did you know that interior design is ranked 13th for programs that firms wanna hire from across the nation? And that's ranked first in Ohio. Um, did you know that the architecture program, professional licensing exam, the ARE, that Kent State ranks 10th in the nation for pass rate? Um, and some of those that are above us are tiny programs uh, that just only graduate a few people a year. Um, did you know that the construction management program uh, won the Cincinnati competition the last three years in a row, um, the student competition? or that uh, the Index Studio uh, publication book is now out and uh, on the shelves, we're excited about that. Um, and maybe you didn't even know that the uh, construction management program has a new Masters of Science uh, where we're going to be introducing research and uh, graduate students to that program, which will surely push the agenda uh, forward and develop more and more leaders for that discipline. We're getting noticed around the country and around the world. Um, and you know what, there's another uh, fact which is a little bit surprising to those at the university uh, and universities everywhere that our enrollment in the year of COVID is actually up. Um, first year may not be up, but overall our enrollment is up and that certainly wasn't anticipated three or four months ago. You know, if you've been here that we've initiated in the last few years a few key strategies and the overarching uh, approach to them has been, number one, get you out, uh, and number two, bring outsiders in. You know, getting you out has uh, been done through things like uh, student travel initiatives, where we've raised a lot of funds to help uh, support people getting to Florence, uh, to uh, develop traveling workshops and, and studio travel that's gone around the country and around the world, um, to competitions, mostly in the construction management, a field that have gone around the country uh, to the development of tra traveling fellowships. Uh, we're getting you out and it's been extraordinary. Um, while some of those were on pause last semester and will be on pause this semester, we're continuing to raise funds and that will be a key initiative that we return to. It changes a lot of things. It gives you exposure. Um, it gives you confidence. You get into offices and best practices and see how different people in different places operate differently. Uh, and that enhances your education tremendously. But we're also bringing others in through new hires. We've had tremendous new hires in the last few years. Through a review week, which was revamped, and we've brought in hundreds, hundreds of, of people who we want to see our college and to see you and to see your work. And that has added to our reputation. Um, not only do we get you get those experts, but they get to see us. We've added workshops, as you're aware of. We've added a lecture series and an exhibition series, which is uh, as good as any anywhere. Um, and we've been fortunate that we have generous alums who are supporting these initiatives in, in tremendous ways. Now, some of these are on pause, um, but we are being innovative. And this will not be a lost semester or a lost year, I promise you. We are working in innovative ways to do that. And I'd like to turn back to Professor Bernal and ask if you would tell us about the lecture series and how we're innovating that a bit uh, so that we can do something that is unique to the kind of format that we have. Yes, Mark. Uh, this fall, we're going to have the proper lecture series in the sense that there's going to be keynotes and there's going to be people so many remotely to give you a lectures in the way that they will be conveying um, their, their work to you, to the students, to the faculty and the staff. We have Rachel Armstrong confirmed for September 8th. She'll be doing a lecture. We have Sara Safaverdi, our fellow from last year, but who also is continuously teaching with us this fall for the, in the Cleveland studios. She's teaching a studio with an emphasis in urban design. We also have Raymond Jungles. Um, he's gonna he's confirmed for October 29, and we have confirmed Michael Malson, who's gonna be uh, giving a lecture on November 16. In addition to these lectures, we decided to come up with a new format in which students and faculty are more familiar with the kind of work that they're on. Uh, we're doing here internally at the CAD, 
and in the program. So we're calling this new modality faculty and friends. It's a conversation that will take place either Wednesday and Thursdays or most of every, almost every single week uh, after studios. And we have a charge faculty to think of someone that they can have a conversation to think about how the research is implemented in academia, but more importantly, in the discipline and the field of architecture professionally and, and also in the design part. So we have Bill Willoughby, who's going to be giving a, a lecture and having a conversation with Pasquale de Paola. Uh, this is going to happen uh, September 16. Professor Luis Santos is going to be having a giving a presentation and a conversation with Dr. Cynthia Camilo Thori. Uh, I won't read the dates because too many dates and you will not take note of this, so you'll receive at some moment this by email. We have Pro Professor Postinci, who's going to have a conversation with Gilles Redsin. Uh, Professor Nick Safely is going to have a conversation with Mark Linder. Professor Tina Pato is going to have a conversation with Milagro Singoni. Um, Professor Kat Marshall is going to have a conversation with Gary Smith. Finally, our new uh, Chilowski fellow, Jennifer Mickens, is going to have a conversation with Anya Jaworska. And this last one is going to take place in um, October 28. In addition to the, the lectures and also the faculty and friends conversations, we're going to have two exhibitions for, that are planned right now. And thank you, Jean, for helping organize this and to Diane for helping get this organized. The first one is going to be Parallel Biology by Rachel Amstrom. That's going to take place September 8th. And the second one is going to be Candid's Garden. It's going to take place on October 19 by our former Silaski fellow, Sara Sopaverdi. Unfortunately, she was not able to complete her exhibition and lecture uh, in the spring due to COVID and everything that happened. So she's taking advantage of the fall and the youth students and faculty are here to be able to open her exhibition and give a lecture. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, it is exciting. And, uh, you know, given that we are having people remotely and not flying them in, we're able to have more people and do some things in a little bit different way. Uh, but, you know, be sure to get involved. Um, we also are going to have some construction management talks, both in and outside of the classroom. Uh, I think that's under development, uh, unless uh, Professor uh, Gunhan, unless you have something to add specifically about that. Uh, yes, thank you, Mark. It's under development, but we will have uh, outside uh, guest speakers in our classrooms in individual uh, uh, different classes. We will have guests uh, from around the world and domestically national speakers. It's wonderful. And and while um, Jean, while uh, Yvonne stole a little bit of your thunder there, would you would you come in? I'd like people to know who's responsible for putting together and making the lectures happen. I'm sorry, the exhibits happen. That would be me. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, so um, we've had, you know, in, in the past, we have really had a packed gallery schedule and it's, and the only way that we can do that is with the help of uh, student volunteers. And if you've seen any of the exhibitions, uh, you know, the students have done amazing um, work in producing very professional museum quality results and we're, um, kind of dedicated to doing the same thing this year. So I just want to make an announcement that, you know, we are looking for additional student volunteers um, this semester. Um, we're actually going to be installing the Rachel Armstrong Parallel Biology exhibit next week. So if you're interested in participating in the, in the gallery, um, and, you know, when we, just as a side note, um, when we, you know, invite um, guests to, to exhibit their work, students have a very intimate relationship with those guests and uh, um, they have used those guests as, as recommendations for future in grad school and employment opportunities. So you get a lot of um, face time and experience with uh, interesting, important uh, people in the discipline. So if you're interested in contributing to the uh, to the gallery exhibitions team, please email me, jjaminat at Kent, and uh, hopefully we'll see you soon. Thanks a lot, Gene. Uh, thanks.
So, uh, you know, I said we're being innovative. We're making lemonade out of a challenging situation and have every intention of coming out on the other side of COVID ahead. Um, we've revised our lecture series. Um, we uh, last semester converted to a competition awards format in the spring uh, because we were remote and we thought, how can we do this differently and take advantage of the new situation? We started a new summer workshop series for students, recent alums and professionals, many of whom suddenly didn't have jobs and that was to advance their skills or your skills and positions in the workplace by learning new technologies and techniques. And that were, I've been beginning to call the lifelong learning workshop series. That's gonna continue. We're also taking advantage of, of having faculty from around the world, both for teaching in this time when uh, some of our courses need to be remote, but also to bring in people into courses to teach one or two lectures and that we call the affiliated faculty program. So some of your professors are gonna be bringing in outsiders into the classroom using virtual technologies to greatly expand our network and connection to practices and to people who would never have time to teach a whole class, but are experts that we can pipe in uh, to be a part of that class. And we're working on a virtual office tour um, 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 initiative that will enable you to visit some best practices around the country and perhaps the world um, in your studios, but perhaps even outside of it. So this is the year of COVID. We are in a radical epic time, uh, but we're adjusting and we need you to work with us in that adjustment. The easy thing would have been to go remote with all of our courses, you know, do, but we've been doing everything we can to make an excellent experience with an excellent staff and faculty. And studios are the most obvious. And Professor Bernal told you what we've done. And it is, it is Herculean, the effort that went on uh, to create those studios in a way that are socially distanced. Uh, we've set up crit stations in the studio, but we need your diligence and respect for each other to wear masks and to go by the safe seven uh, so that we can make it to Thanksgiving um, in face-to-face -face in those studios. Um, we worked very hard to match the desire for face-to-face -face studios with our ability to offer them. And we did match it with respect to providing the studio spaces and infrastructure for you to do your work. You have studio stations and places. We weren't quite able to do so with respect to the number of faculty who can or should be teaching face-to-face. -face. Some of them can't or shouldn't be. Um, so we have and are adding graduate and course assistants who will be there face-to-face -face for those sections. So we're, we're pretty proud of what we've been able to pull together in these extreme situations. We've set up cameras for live casting of courses. We purchased 23 large monitors with capacity for wireless links to support up pinups safely. We've provided cameras for construction management faculty to teach more effectively remotely. We've provided over 50 touchscreen laptops for studio professors so they can mark up your drawings remotely. We've made many of our computer lab stations remote and we're close to having an uplink to the Ohio supercomputer system so that you can render on the cloud. So we're ready, but we need your commitment to the protocols. You know, I've said it before, our mission is to prepare you to lead in a rapidly changing profession and world. Uh, we wanna be recognized as a premier design and construction programs nationally. And uh, we are confidently launching our, pro our college outward toward increasing national attention and recognition for the remarkable education that's happening here. The context of that education is accelerations. We're in the age of accelerations. And it's more critical than ever to learn to concentrate and have purpose and intentionality in an age of distractions. It's more critical than ever to develop flexible minds. Uh, to have the willingness to adopt new technologies and techniques, and to learn effective collaboration across disciplines. I was heartened by a team of architecture and construction management students who worked together on a construction management capstone class last year. And to my eyes, the results were superior because they added comprehensiveness and perspective to each other's work. And it's great to see ID and architecture students teaming with CM students on competitions. In our disciplines, whether construction management or ID or landscape or architecture or landscape architecture, the secret sauce is integration, uh, the art and science of what we do. Peeled away from each other, the results become thin. 
uh, joined, not by addition, but by true integration, the art and science of our crafts are gonna soar and outpace what others are doing. So ask yourselves how materials and methods and pro practice and estimating and scheduling relate to design and vice versa, not as antagonists, but as co-collaborators toward progressive realizable projects that we can and will put into the built environment. You know, the college, in my observation, the college has developed a new kind of discourse that is seen and felt in the attendance questions and conversations uh, surrounding the lectures. It's exciting. It's a learning community, which is different than a collection of people who take classes and learn degrees and earn degrees. You know, outsiders are also taking notice. I can tell you that professors in universities who we once considered aspirant programs see us as peers. Um, the quality of the work at the CAD is tremendous and it's improving. And I guarantee you that you will soon be winning more and more competitions and awards. So keep doing them. Let's continue that kind of thinking and promote one another this year. Um, I wanted to tell you that the digital workshops will be back. Stay tuned for when. Uh, there's an AED general workshop that uh, has been announced and do get engaged in them. If you're an AED general student, um, you wanna get involved in that workshop. That'll help you prepare for the program. Uh, we will continue our traveling fellowships program. The travel itself is on pause, but we're gonna keep awarding uh, traveling fellowships to students and faculty. And we are working on how to do portfolio resume workshops and portfolio and career fairs. Uh, so stay tuned for those. Uh, a couple of our speakers mentioned employment. Um, we have radically increased the number of student uh, positions in this college. And I just wanna remind you that we have student employees in the publications office, in the administration. We have student ambassadors. We have the digital output lab, fab lab monitors. Then we have graduate assistants, those are GAs, teaching assistants, which are TAs, research assistants, which are RAs, DAs are digital assistants, CAs are course assistants, and FAs are faculty assistants. So stay tuned for email posts of jobs. And if you have federal work study status, let us know. Own your education, um, have passion and pursue ways that your designs and work will matter. Um, and consider the conceptual basis and the making, the material practice of what you do. I want to encourage each of you as I started off to respect and benefit from the diversity of the larger community and to respect each other by keeping the safe seven. If you have symptoms of any kind whatsoever, don't come in, please. We are set up for remote teaching. You won't miss a beat. Okay, it's not a sign of weakness. Um, so please, any symptoms whatsoever, don't come. Uh, simply uh, um, uh, log in to your class and it will go on without a beat. At the same time, you should contact the response team at covid at kent.edu or at 330-672-2525. And don't wait a couple days to do it, do it right away. We're all in this together. We don't want this to explode and for us to be uh, remote in a couple of weeks. Uh, so I just encourage you, whether you're on campus or off campus, um, to uh, think of the whole community. The last thing um, for this meeting is I'd like you to grab your phone. Can you all grab your phone? Everybody grab your phone. And uh, Sarah Milley in the chat room, and I know some of you are on YouTube, so it may not work in YouTube and we'll send out an email but we want you to sign up for our Instagram, for our Facebook, social media, our webpage, our LinkedIn, flash alerts. Uh, but also we want you to have the link to the competition winners uh, from last year's program. Uh, we had a great group of winners and wonderful work. And there's an article on our webpage and we wanna make sure that you can in one click get to that and see the quality of work that's coming out of our students this year. So uh, do that. I assume that it's posted already. And uh, let's stay connected. Um, and uh, at one o'clock, you're going to receive another uh, document called a useful links document. Uh, it's scheduled to be sent to you that provides you links that are for our college university links, as well as digital magazines and publications for all of the disciplines that I think will enhance 
uh, what you do as you become uh, a learner that owns your own education. So it's wonderful to see you all, even if it isn't face to face. Uh, have a great semester uh, and uh, aspire, be intense, be safe and have fun. Thank you so much and uh, have a tremendous semester.